There are about 15 topics on my top five favorite list of physics topics, and electromagnetic waves is one of them. The discovery of the nature of electromagnetic waves, which includes visible light, infrared radiation, ultraviolet light, radio waves, gamma rays, x-rays, etc. The discovery of the nature of these waves is one of the greatest triumphs in, triumphs in physics. So we'll talk about the nature of these waves, uh, the spectrum, electromagnetic spectrum, which includes all these different kinds of waves, radio, x-rays, etc. We'll talk about the speed of electromagnetic radiation, which is the speed of light. All of them travel at the same speed. We'll talk about the energy carried, the Doppler effect, and some uh, very interesting polarization effects. First, the nature. Applications include, oh, there are hundreds and hundreds of applications that use electromagnetic waves. It's used in communications industry, microwaves uh, that cook your food, just hundreds and hundreds of applications. But one in the biomedical arena is cochlear implants, which involves signals that are sent from um, apparatus in the ear to um, and signals back and forth to process the sound and to help you hear better. How uh, do we create these waves? The answer is we have a, an AC generator that we connect to two wires. So there's a wire up here and a wire down here. And what that, that AC generator's job in life is to do is to drive a current in this direction. So a current in that direction means there's a flow of positive charge in that direction. We all know this now. So after that current has been operating for a while, we get some positive charge that accumulates on the, on the top side of this, this long wire and then on the bottom side, negative charges. But if it's an AC source, then the current is gonna reverse its direction at some point, and that will eventually drive the positive charge down to the bottom end, and the negative charge to the top end. Well, those charges create an electric field, as we know. The, the electric field starts, begins at positive charges, and ends at negative charges. And that electric field is, does not only exist in this wire, it's called an antenna, actually, a broadcasting antenna. They don't, also, all, don't only exist in the wire, but they're, they're broadcast out, away from the wire. And shown here is a portion of a wave that's been sent out during this cycle of the, uh, of the um, the, during this quarter cycle. Now, what are shown here are the electric fields pointing down that are propagating to the right. But there are electric fields that propagate toward you and to the left and, and away. It's propagating electromagnetic rays, uh, waves in all directions around this antenna. So then when the uh, current reverses from going up to going down, then all of a sudden we've got an electric field it starts on the positive, ends on the negative, right? That has reversed its direction. So here's that electric field. Here's the electric field that was produced earlier that's propagated further, uh, uh, further away from this antenna. And so what you end up getting is a wave with the direction of travel Uh, away from this rod, from the antenna, and the electric field perpendicular to the direction of travel. And that's a key component of understanding of electromagnetic waves. Well, you might say that charge separation creates electric fields, but currents can create magnetic fields, and you would be right. So while the current is in this vertical direction, we can use the right-hand rule 
to stick our thumb in the direction of the current and our fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic fields. So these magnetic fields come around like this. We've got this one shown already. So they're, those are magnetic fields that, that circulate around this current carrying wire, like we talked about a couple chapters ago. Well, so we've got a magnetic field. So if we looked at this one right here, that magnetic field is directed, if the, if the wire is vertically upward on the screen, the magnetic field is directed into the screen. Over here, direct magnetic field is directed out of the screen. So what do we get? Uh, but again, the direction of propagation is to the right, the travel direction. And the magnetic field is perpendicular to that direction. The electric field is up the screen. The travel direction is in the direction of this pan. The magnetic field is into the screen. So what does the actual wave look like that's created? And it looks like this. And we're going to... Um, specialized to the case where we're far away from this antenna. Here's the antenna. We, uh, we go far away from it. That's the simplest possible case for electromagnetic radiation. And it's called a plain electromagnetic wave or plain electromagnetic radiation. The reason it's called a plane is that the electric fields and magnetic fields anywhere in this plane are going to look the same a plane perpendicular to the direction of travel. All right, well the electric fields as we saw before are up and down, vertically up, up and down the screen in the same direction as the currents in the wire, but the magnetic fields are perpendicular, they're in and out of the screen. So here the magnetic field is out of the screen, pointing out toward you. Here the magnetic field is in to the screen, etc. But note that the direction of the travel, the direction of the electric field, and the direction of the magnetic field are all three perpendicular to each other. So, concept one. For plain electromagnetic waves propagating through vacuum, again, a vacuum is free space. So we're talking about um, nothing there. So this is deep, deep space far away from anything. Um, in deep space, no one can hear you scream. That's because sound waves don't propagate through a vacuum. But guess what? Electromagnetic waves and light do. They do not require a medium, something to propagate through. They propagate through nothing. And um, sound requires air or, or some other substance to travel through. State the relationship between the directions of the electric field, the magnetic field, and the direction of travel. The electric field, the magnetic field, and the direction of travel are mutually perpendicular. We talked about that with the direction of travel given by right-hand rule three. So this is the third right-hand rule that we're dealing with in this class. The thumb of the right hand points in the direction of E. Okay, I've got that part satisfied. The fingers point in the direction of B. And remember, we can't do this. We gotta keep the thumb, the whole thing in a plane like that. All right, the fingers point in the direction of B. Well, at this point here, um, magnetic field is out of the screen. And then the direction of propagation, uh, the direct direction of travel is given by the direction that the palm is facing. So the palm is facing toward me, so direction of travel is, is to the right. E with the thumb, B with the fingers, and palm of the hand pointing in the direction of travel. And you say, well, hang on, uh, I got you there because if we go over here, it's going to point in the opposite direction. Well, let's try it right here. So the magnetic field is in and the electric field is down. What do we do? We're gonna take our thumb and put it in the direction of the electric field, so that's now down. And then we want the direction of the magnetic field to be into the screen. So I gotta turn my hand this way. And what is the direction of my palm? Oh, it's still to the right. So we've reversed both the direction of the electric and the magnetic fields, and that, that just turned my hand opposite, but it's still pointing in the same direction. All right, at a point far from an antenna, the electric field of a radio wave is directed in the positive y direction as a wave travels in the negative x direction. Which of the following statements correctly describes the magnetic field component of the wave at that same location? 
So let's do um, x, y, and then if x is to the right and y is up the screen, then what is the direction of z? Uh, like I talked to you about before, a right-handed coordinate system requires thumb in the x, fingers in the y, and z points out of the palm. So z is out. So let's apply this out of the screen. All right, so for this case, the radio wave is directed in the positive y direction. So the electric field of the radio wave. So this is electric field, positive y. Uh, the wave is traveling in the negative x direction. So I'm going to just call that v as the direction of travel of the wave. And what about the magnetic field? What's the direction of magnetic field? If the direction of propagation is in the negative x direction, then I know my palm has to face that way. I don't know where everything else is going to be, but I know that my palm has to be pushing that way in the direction of propagation. Well, what about the electric field? Well, the electric field has to be in the direction of my thumb. So my thumb is now coming out of the screen, but I actually need it up the screen. So I'm going to turn my hand this way. So now my thumb is in the direction of the electric field. The direction of travel is still to the left. And now we have to ask what the direction of the magnetic field is. And what direction is it? Yeah. Well, it's going to be in the direction of my fingers. So the magnetic field is going to be into the screen. And that is, what direction is that? Z is out. Uh, if th therefore, into the screen is in the minus Z direction. Maybe that a phase with the electric. So here we've asked a question about whether the electric and magnetic fields are out of phase or in phase. Let me go back to here and note that the electric field and the magnetic field are actually in phase with each other. The electric field reaches a peak at the same place that the magnetic, so it's this place right here. The electric field is that way, it's, it's at its peak, and the magnetic field is this way. Here they're both zero, so they're both in phase with each other. They're reaching their maximum and minimums at the same places. So out of phase, that's not true. In phase, it is true. So the magnetic field component is in phase with the electric field component, and it is directed in the positive z direction. Well, that's not true, because we know that it's in the negative z direction. So that one can't be right. Uh, out of phase is not correct. In phase is correct, and its component is directed in the negative z direction. So that's it. Um, so the negative y can't possibly be right, because we know that if the electric field is in the y direction, and the b uh, well, they all three have to be perpendicular, so it can't, that one can't be true. All right, the electric field of a radio wave can be detected with a receiving antenna wire that's parallel to the electric field. So this is a, a receiving antenna. We talked about a broadcasting antenna before. This is how the wave is actually received. You have two pieces of wire, but no AC source now. The wave is the source. This is how you get radio waves and listen to your favorite radio station. The electric field, if it's, if it's oriented parallel to this straight antenna wire, then that electric field is going to cause, the, uh, cause a current and, and charge, cause currents to move up and down. The electric field exerts a force. on a charged particle. So that that force causes the particles to causes a current in this wire, and we get uh, we need a, a, trans, and a mutual inductance transform and a capacitor. This is called an LC circuit. We talked about the LRC circuit already. RLC, LRC, same thing. Um, and this circuit is intended to to oscillate the charge sloshing around in this in this circuit like we talked about in resonance uh, and that creates a a current that you drive to your amplifier etc 
you can also receive electromagnetic radiations using a loop antenna. So this is just a wire loop, nothing more, nothing less, that goes to an LC circuit that's going to amplify the signal. In this case, you want the magnetic field oriented perpendicular to the loop. So this loop is in the plane of the screen, and the magnetic field is going to either be into the screen or out of the screen. What that does is it changes the flux through this loop, the magnetic flux. Sometimes it'll be positive into the screen, and other times it'll be out of the screen. And uh, if you change the flux, then you're going to induce an EMF through Faraday's law. Where n here is the number of loops in uh, number of turns in the, in, in the wire loop, which is just one in this case. We're going to be changing that flux as a function of time. We'll get a signal in the circuit. So you can, you can either detect the electric field in a receiving antenna with a straight wire, or the magnetic field using a loop antenna. And you see both in this particular antenna that's mounted to the mast of a ship. There's a loop antenna. Here's a straight uh, line antenna, various other um, antennas in this in this mast. So here's a, a demo of the effect of a Faraday cage on radio reception. The intent of this demo is to convince you that you can intercept, or that, that electromagnetic radiation consists of, well, includes electric uh, fields those electric fields that will cause those wires in the Faraday cage to uh, cause currents in those wires. This is a demonstration of a Faraday cage. A Faraday cage is a metal cage that can be used to exclude electromagnetic radiation from, the, from its interior. This is a, an old-fashioned ham FM radio, portable radio. I'm going to tune in to uh, our department head's uh, favorite channel. So while we're grooving to the music, So, so sorry, Dr. Soika. Goodbye to your radio station. So, what's happening? What's happening is that the electromagnetic radiation from the transmitting station is being captured normally in normal operation. It's being captured by the antenna, causing electrons. The, if, if the electric field coming in from the, from the electromagnetic radiation has a component of electric field uh, in the direction of the antenna, then that electric field that's oscillating will cause the electrons in the antenna to oscillate, and that signal gets propagated down and amplified by the, by the radio. What happens when um, a Faraday cage is in place is that this cage intercepts the electric fields, causing this wire in the cage to vibrate. Notice we've got a, a conducting uh, top plate here, a conducting bottom plate here. So the electromagnetic waves are intercepted by this metallic um, enclosure and aren't allowed to penetrate into the interior of the Faraday cage. Okay. Another application, wireless capsule endoscopy. This wireless capsule endoscope is designed to be swallowed. Sounds delicious. As it passes through the intestines, it broadcasts video images of the interior of the intestines. These are uh, high frequency waves, 10 to the 9 hertz, uh, in the ultra high frequency range. 